Hello, Paul again. Okay, what we've got back on the bench is part two of the RF Concepts RFC 2417 170-watt, two-meter linear amplifier. All right, what have we found? Again, in my limited capabilities as a technician. All right, so if you remember, just to summarize, uh, when we got this amp back um, from repair, it wasn't holding um, output. The output in the last video was shown. Uh, when you keyed up, it would start off at uh, 100 watts and decline to somewhere around about 50 watts on a 40 watt input. Well, if we have a look now, we've got the amp in TX mode. We've got it on two meters right there on a simplex frequency. We have a look there. We've got 150. Have a look at the needle. It's gone down to 140 as it's heating up. So it's fairly stable. A bit of smell coming out of the unit now. And I'll explain what's going on. All right, so what, the, what I found on investigation and having a look at the schematics in this that the RF choke was missing, it had been cut, disconnected, and for whatever reason, this inductor uh, was not refitted. And we're finding that the, the, the final stage here was getting extremely hot only after a period of around 10 seconds. The heat sink got um, hot enough that it was very uncomfortable to touch, and certainly this area here, um, these resistors, these 30, uh, 38 ohm resistors here and here, were extremely hot to the point that this one and this one are slightly discolored. Okay, so my investigation process, I had a phone call to another uh, colleague and he suggested that I start looking at areas where um, RF was getting back into the ground. So the first thing I did was go through and have a look at these resistors. These ones here uh, which is the 10 ohm, we're not showing the correct uh, the correct um, uh, resistance, so I replaced both of these. And we can see here we've got 2.5 watts, here are the two that I replaced. Um, I was also a bit concerned about uh, these MOX um, uh, resistors here, the 50 ohm uh, 5 watt. They were also showing signs of fatigue, so I replaced them with these two here. Um, disconnected all these resistors, checked their values. Um, this needs replacing and these two here need replacing. Uh, the, um, I, I then added a, as per the brief on the schematic, a 1.2 inductor. It's a very small um, output capabilities, but as soon as I installed that, the RF stabilized. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty, pretty scored, but it's still holding together. So what I've done is um, looked at a local supplier, found some, they're very, very rare, and I've ordered a series of these. I've ordered some... Uh, uh, what are we? I've ordered a 2.2 H, a UH, a 1.2, and some ones as well in a radial. In my other RFC uh, amplifier, it has a 2.2 uh, um, uh, uh, micro Henry inductor, and so that's the reason for um, uh, purchasing some of those. So what I'll do is systematically, I'll start at one and then go through until I get a stable output with no burning. Uh, the ones that I've ordered are 15, oh, sorry, 11 millimeters to 14 millimeters long. These are only five millimeters long, so they're not handling the um, uh, 1200 uh, milliamps that are in that circuit at the base. So again, if I'm saying the wrong thing here, please bring it up with me. Now, the second problem or issue with this amplifier, which is one of the reasons why it was sent away, 
was to resolve the um, the receive preamp stage, which was uh, not working. So um, again, it's still not working, and the fault has been found uh, here when the uh, Mo the Motorola dual gate gas field uh, transistor. Uh, it's an MRF966. I've ordered some of those, couldn't find any in Australia, so I've had to um, order them from outside of the country. And um, I'm, the other thing that I, I do note that in this circuit, in my other um, amplifier, it actually has a three-leg transistor that goes from here to there to there. This one has a hole where it was, and all it's got here is a capacitor joining this. And I feel that that resistor is a switch is used to switch the RF when it goes into uh, to stop the final amount of RF getting into the RX um, circuit. Now this. Um, MRF966 has been replaced over the last week and it blew as soon as I turned it on yesterday and that was part of that video that I showed so no doubt um, there are other issues with this amplifier I'm not giving up on it yet uh, it's I've had it for many many years but the positive sign to this is that we have got it stabilized and we have got it sitting at 150 watts at 45 watts drive. It should be doing around 170, 180. That should pick up with the um, RS choke. And um, yeah, as far as I can see, they're the only components that are needing to be brought back up to tolerance or manufacturer's specs. Uh, and that's about it. At the moment, I gave the board a clean so that um, I could uh, get rid of all the old flux. Interesting that this has the SRF3883 VHF um, uh, MOSFET, uh, sorry, um, uh, transistors. In the other... In the other um, RSC2417, it has this circuit, but it has MRF247s uh, as final transistors. And it could easily, you could be easily um, confused into following the uh, 120 watt version of this amplifier schematic and working off that if you're trying to repair one of these. You do have to follow the 2417. Uh, 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 RFC schematics uh, I've got some here and I can show you a comparison so the main things that are in the In the 2417, uh, in the, sorry, 2410 uh, schematics, it does not have this inductor in the, in the unit. So if you are following the, those particular schematics, which you may be falsely um, believe that that's been added and it's not necessary. Okay. Secondly, the... Um, the other units do not have real A3 for the preamp. And this is real A3 for the preamp, the top real A. Now, in my other unit, it's got all of that, and it has the RF inductor. There are some small other variants within the schematics. Um, so the point of the exercise today is that we have uh, done some minor problem sorting. The amp's still working. We've isolated uh, the inductor as an issue. We've replaced these parts. 
And straight and and from from that little bit of investigating last night, the RF output has relatively stabilised. All right, so this is part B. Uh, I can see it's going to a C and D. Um, as the parts arrive, they're going to take some time now because I've had to go outside the country. So when I have more, I will show more. Thank you very much for watching this very simple video on me doing my best to return um, a 10-year-old uh, plus amplifier back to service rather than throwing it in the bin. Cheers, guys. Ham radio and uh, is, a, is a wonderful hobby um, during challenging times when we need projects to keep ourselves going. Thank you. Bye-bye.